Ja, grüß euch miteinander, servus miteinander. Hi, friends of Japanese prints. Let me first introduce, my name is Dieter Van Schura and I'm the owner of the Artelino company. We sell Japanese art prints in weekly online auctions. And today I want to present a specific design. This one showing Mount Matterhorn in Switzerland by one of my most favorite contemporary artists. His name is Osamu Sugiyama and he was born in 1946. Uh, he was a student of the famous artist, Shinhanga artist Toshi Yoshida. You remember the Yoshida family, Hiroshi Yoshida, then Toshi Yoshida, his father, and Osamu Sugiyama learned how to make a woodblock print from Toshi Yoshida. Um, these woodblock prints, they, this is called Mokuhanga. Mokuhanga stands for woodblock. And it's all handmade, really. There is nothing mechanically involved. In order to produce a print like this, you have to carve from a wooden block the design, and you have to make one block for each color. Crazy, yeah? These are maybe five different colors, at least. And look at that, you cannot just okay, afterwards put the, 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 the paste of the color and then put the paper on it. Look at that, this is called gradation. Um, it's much darker, the blue, than down here in the area where it's lighter. Like this, you get a, a, a great effect. I could never do it. You most probably, unless you're a Moku hanger artist and a good Moku hanger artist, you couldn't do it either. More about um, Osamu Sugiyama. He takes part in the annual Hanga Academy exhibitions of the Yoshida family. And uh, Osamu Sugiyama is not only a great artist, he's a great mountaineer. Um, the designs that he produces that as a woodblock print show to 99% um, mountain views, great mountain views. As a mountaineer, he has climbed the highest mountains in Japan and in Europe, and also many, many of the high mountains in the Himalayas, maybe also Southern America, I don't know. Um, can't remember that at the moment. But I want to tell you today the story about the first ascent of Matterhorn, the conquest of the Matterhorn, because often these stories behind an image, they are so fascinating. The Matterhorn is located in Switzerland. It's 4,501 meters high. That is for you guys in the US, that is 14,769 feet. And the first ascent is connected with a very tragic and bitter story. It's subject to many, many books and even films until today. Well, the first successful attempt was on July 14th of 1865. 1865, remember, with that equipment at the time. There were several uh, unsuccessful attempts before in the 1950s and 1960s. But these groups of mountaineers, by and by, okay, um, made their attempts higher and higher until finally July 14th in 1865. And the first ascent was successful by a group of seven mountaineers under the leadership of Edward Wimper, an Englishman, and he was accompanied by three other Englishmen and um, a mountain guide from Chamonix and two local guides uh, from Zermatt, Peter Taugwalder, father and son. While the other uh, names of the Englishmen were Charles Hudson, Francis Douglas and Douglas Robert Haddow. Douglas Robert Haddow was the weakest climber in the group. I'm mentioning that now because uh, that uh, should lead to the tragedy. Well, it's even more exciting because the very same day when they reached the summit, another group of climbers had tried to be the first, 
but they had tried the ascent from the Italian side, from another side. But when this group, this was under the lead, under, led by Jean Antoine, Antoine Carrel, when they saw, um, they saw the, the Englishmen on the summit, they were 400 meters below the summit. And well, then they gave up and returned safely down to Chamonix, into the valley. Yeah, after they had conquered the summit, they were upbeat, of course, and well, then they started to the descent, and that was not quite easy. And during that descent, the tragedy, the bitter tragedy happened. The weakest guy, Haddo, he slipped and pulled three others with him. These three others were Charles Hudson, Francis Douglas, and Michael Cross. Only Wimper and the two local guys, Taugwalder, father and son, they survived. When they went on the descent, they were tied together with a rope, with several ropes. Uh, it's done the same way today. And Wimper and the two Taugwalders could only survive because the rope after Francis Douglas, it broke. And the four others, they fell down. They were not seen by the survivors anymore. The three survivors spent the night on the mountain. And then the next day, they could manage to descend safely uh, down to Zermatt and the village in the valley. And in Zermatt, a rescue operation was organized and the next day they found the dead bodies of the three men, of the four men, no, three men on a glacier and the body of Douglas was never found. Afterwards, there was a formal investigation if the rope had really broken or if it was cut by Taugwalder who was connected directly to Douglas, but no proof was ever found that uh, the rope was cut and Taugwalder was equipped, acquitted. Well, so much, uh, I thought it might be of some interest for you to tell you the story behind an image. Well, so much for today. Thanks for watching and have a good week. And I hope to see you maybe in one of our auctions and hope to see you again for our next video. Thanks. Goodbye.